In today's video, I will discuss a practical approach to off-camera flash photography and show you how I use those techniques to create this image. Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are new to the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of about 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. Today, I will show you a practical way to use off-camera flash photography or basically how I use off-camera flash photography and also discuss all the controls that we have to consider whenever we're using off-camera flash. So today I have a background from Kate Backdrop setup. This is basically just um, a printed backdrop on microfiber, which is fantastic because it is non-reflective. This is five by seven. So I really, really love this pattern. Normally I go through all my lighting or all the equipment I'll be using for lighting today. But since I wanted it to be very practical, I think it's time for me to call in my wife Coco, who will be my subject today so that I can go through the step-by-step -step process of how I'm going to do things. Okay, so come on in, babe. All right, hi, babe. Hi, babe. Okay, look fantastic as always. Thank you. So you have to bear with me because I want to go through the step-by-step -step process of what we're going to do so that everybody can understand how simple it is or how complicatedly simple it is to mix ambient light and flash. Okay, so the flash that I'm going to be using is my Sony F45RM. It's going to be co remotely controlled using this one, the WRC1M from Sony. And the camera that I will use is my Sony A7 Mark IV with a 50mm 1.2 lens. Now everything that you're going to be seeing when I shoot my beautiful wife is straight out of the camera. You can see that there's a cable here. It's connected to the Thomas Ninja V. In other words, it's recording everything that um, my camera is seeing. So all the images are straight out of the camera. But if you want to see the process images, we usually put it at the very end of the image. Okay. So what are my settings? That's what we're, that's what we're going to fix now. So right now, I am, uh, let me turn off my flash first. So this is how the image looks like as is. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to diffuse it just to give uh, a difference in terms of how, you'll understand later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to double diffuse the light to create even softer light. All right. So now that we have beautiful soft light, you can see here, it's beautiful. It's already as is. Straight out of the camera, 1 over 40, f1.2, ISO 200. It's a beautiful image by itself. Okay, babe, take your pose. So there, beautiful, right? And when you look at this, you'll say, wow, it's already an amazing image. Why do I even need to put flash? Well, that's actually a very good question. When you have beautiful light like this, normally I would suggest not to even put flash anymore because it's beautiful as is. However, I wanted to explain how the relationship of ambient light and flash actually works. So what do I, what do I mean by that? The ambient light is already very good. However, I want to put some pop to the image. And how do I do that? I will now balance my flash to my existing ambient light. So right now I won't even touch the settings at one over four, one over 40 F 1.2 ISO 200. I won't touch it, but I will add a flash. But here's a difference. I will actually use my flash also together with the existing ambient light just to create that pop, that separation. It's like layering by light. It's just, it's just beautiful when you really look at it. So right now my flash is remotely controlled using this on the WRC1M. I can actually put it, let's say for example, I'll put it first at full power. So you guys can see, I'll put it at full power. So when I take a shot with my flash, that's how it's going to look. Really, really overexposed. Now let's move this light here so that it's a bit nicer. Let's put this flash here. So really, really overexposed. So that means that the balance of ambient light and flash is not there. 
you could see the Mach 3 shooting at, uh, well, uh, two thirds stop under exposed. When I turn off my flash, this is the actual exposure. But when I turn on the flash, it's just really comp. It, it turns on live view. It turns off live view. So let's do one more. Sorry, let's do one more with full power. So it's totally overexposed. So the balance of flash and ambient light is not there. So let me now turn back the power. Maybe about one thirty-two. Right. And look at that. So you're probably saying now it doesn't really make any difference, but let me show you. I'll turn off my flash now. And I'll take one more shot. This is the shot. Let me play it now straight out of the camera. This is the shot without flash. This is the shot with, without flash, with, without flash, with, without flash, with. That's how you use off camera flash photography. So let me summarize everything. When you have beautiful ambient light, you want to use it. But there are times that you want to add a flash to existing ambient light just to create that 3D, that layers that you want for that image to pop. And that's the case that I did here. But take a look at this one. What if I just remove all existing ambient light? So maybe my shutter speed, I'll bring it up. I'll turn off my trigger first so we can see live view how it's looking. Maybe I could put it at 1 over 1000 f1.2 let's put it at iso 100 so right now maybe at 1 over 640 500 we don't see anything anymore so now with my flash i will put it on high speed sync turn on high speed sync and maybe put it at full power okay so we'll take one shot so that's a properly exposed image you could see that the light that, I'm, that's, that I have now, by the way, my light is being modified by the MagMod MagSphere and the MagGrid so that I can just focus some of the light. You could see that this is how the light looks like without any existing ambient light. And that's what I am talking about. It's just that a balance of ambient light and flash that creates that elegance of the image, right, babe? So let's bring it back to the original settings. Let's now go back to ISO 200 again then bring it back to one over 40, I think, at that time. And then we change my flash settings, take it out of high speed sync, bring it back to 132 power. Okay, is my flash on? I'll take one more shot, babe. One more shot. This is with flash and ambient light. Then let me turn off my flash. And this is ambient light only. So let's go through it without any edit. Ambient light only, with flash, flash only. With flash, ambient light, ambient light only. You see that subtle, that subtle pop of light? That is so essential. But of course, we could play around and maybe if we want, let's remove a bit more ambient light. So I don't need to change my flash power anymore because the shutter speed doesn't affect the, the power of the flash. It's only the aperture or the ISO. So let me see one shot, babe. This is flash with ambient light a bit more controlled. So again, it's a preference right now. It actually looks good. I like it. So again, let's go around. Uh, this is with flash with ambient light controlled right now. It is about two stops underexposed. So again, with flash with ambient light controlled. This is without flash. This is with flash, with ambient light, that's just about 0.7 of a stop underexposed. And this is just basically flash. So that's how to actually balance ambient light and flash, or that's how to do off-camera flash photography. The first thing you have to consider is that, what are you gonna do with your existing ambient light? Are you gonna remove it? Are you gonna use it? How much of it are you gonna use? Number two, where are you gonna put your flash? I forgot to mention, I have my flash right here because the existing ambient light is coming from this direction. And because it's coming from this direction, I want my other light coming from there too so that I don't get any cross shadows. Then number three, you adjust your flash power accordingly to balance your existing ambient light and your flash to get the proper exposure. That's how simple it is. All these things that you see that flash photographers use is basically this, what we discussed here 
in a in controlled environment. This ambient light that you see could actually be your sun or any ambient light that's in existence in your scene. And of course, your artificial light is your flash or this could be replaced by LEDs. Really depends on your personal preference. By the way, babe, thank you very much for doing this. You looked fantastic in the images and we only shot a few images. We're gonna shoot a bit more after this video is over. So if you guys have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did like this video, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.